Today we are going to look at research in regard to how kefir, or if you like pronunciation, kefir, basically help reduce hypertension. It's an interesting, interesting dynamic in regard to the bacteria, beneficial bacteria that a company, or I should say, are part of kefir or kefir, uh, and its reduction in blood pressure. We're going to be looking at an animal model, so we're not going to be able to translate it immediately into how much a human should take in order to achieve the same results. However, though, how this one beverage operates is quite amazing, especially since it even affects enzymes in the brain. So it's particularly of intriguing uh, prospect in regard to how it helps reduce hypertension. You'll discover more about that when we get to the abstract itself. But let's cover the basic territory for now. Again, I apologize, some people like to pronounce it kefir, or some people pronounce it kefir. I'm gonna use kefir because it's it's naturally easier for me to say it that way. But to proceed as follows. Drinking kefir may prompt brain-gut communication to lower blood pressure. Drinking kefir, or kefir, may have a positive effect on blood pressure by promoting communication between the gut and brain. Kefir is a fermented probiotic beverage known to help maintain the balance of beneficial bacteria in the digestive system. We're gonna go right to the study itself. Now, this is an animal model, but they consumed kefir for about nine weeks and this is the results as follows. After nine weeks of kefir supplementation, the treated rats had lower levels of endotoxins, toxic substances associated with disruption in the cells, lower blood pressure, and improved intestinal permeability when compared with the untreated group. Healthy intestines allow some substances to pass through, but generally act as a barrier to keep out harmful bacteria, i.e. the endotoxins we just mentioned and other potentially dangerous substances. In addition, kefir supplementation restored the natural balance of four different bacteria in, in the gut, and this is where it gets interesting, and of an enzyme in the brain essential for normal nervous system function, suggesting that the nervous system or nervous, nervous and digestive systems work together to reduce hypertension. To proceed a little further, our data, quoting the researchers, suggests that kefir, kefir, supplementation, or antihypertensive associated mechanisms involve gut microbiota, brain access communication during hypertension, the researchers wrote. To proceed a little bit more into the abstract itself, all the links will be there for you to follow as well if you want to research more on your own. But this abstract makes it even a little more interesting and intriguing. You'll understand why in a second. To proceed, quoting the researchers from the abstract. Our data shows that kefir, kefir treatment in SHR, spontaneous hypertensive rats, when it's an animal model, restores gut microbiota composition and intestinal structure, hence the reduction of endotoxins, diminishing levels of serum endotoxin, reduces neuroinflammation, so that part's actually really cool, and balances levels of tyrosine hydroxylase within the hypothalamus. Altogether, our data suggests that kefir, kefir, antihypertensive associated mechanisms involve gut microbiota, brain access communication during hypertension. Again, the links to this abstract and citation for you to follow your own will be there. Once again, incredible research considering the fact that we are basically made of food and its components that validates the health benefits of the positive microbiota in regard to Kefir, kefir. I apologize for bouncing back and forth between both pronunciations. However, though, that's another debate altogether. Again, this is Ralph Street Channel signing off. Thank you very much for listening and look forward to seeing you all once again, as always, in seven days. And thank you.